Thank you for waiting. So we would like to start the next lecture. So Mr. Endo is a committer of Ruby and he has been engaged in enhancement of the test suite of Ruby, implementation of Ruby coverage measurement feature, release management of Ruby 1.9.2 and 2.0.0. And he's the author of some books, including The World of uh, Obfuscated Historic Aristotle Programming and Learning Ruby by Making Ruby, and the co translator of the types and programming languages. So today he will be talking on the topic of an improvement plan for Ruby coverage measurement. Thank you for the introduction. So today, as introduced, I would like to talk about the improvement plan for Ruby coverage measurement. So people often tell me that uh, I speak too fast, so I think I'm going to speak very slowly for today. So this is the content for my speech. As the title is shown, I would like to first talk about what is the power uh, coverage and how the power coverage should be utilized, and then how the coverage measurement works in Ruby. So I will introduce some easy examples. And last but not least, I would like to talk about how the coverage has been measured and analyzed at Cookpad. Let me introduce myself a little bit. So in September this year, I joined the Cookpad, and I'm a full-time Ruby committer. That's my job title. So I'm mainly engaged in the Ruby development. So for the, uh, in the past, I have been doing this as a hobby, but now I'm doing it professionally. So my uh, mission is to improve the robot robustness of Ruby. So the statistic analysis is also a topic I would like to embark on. But uh, first, I would like to talk about uh, start with the coverage first. So what is coverage? That would be my first topic in this presentation. So in a nutshell, this might be somewhat misleading to some people, but uh, this is the uh, indicator to measure the goodness of the test. So it, it, it is sometimes called as code coverage or test coverage. And I will talk more in details about what is the coverage, but uh, the effect of measuring coverage is that uh, we can identify the codes which are not tested. And also, some people might disagree with this point, but uh, it is also possible to estimate the degree of test. And this coverage in Ruby, this is very important because so far, if the Ruby program runs correctly or not, there are several um, suggestions to the verification, but uh, the proven verification method is only the testing. So in the current version, this is the only me way to measure the or to verify the Ruby. So from Ruby 1.9, the coverage measurement uh, functionality, well, in the previous versions, uh, there was some library existed, but uh, from the 1.9 version and onwards, uh, the coverage measurement functionality will become a standard option. So that would be used to the test or to measure the coverage. And I have been working on the development and the maintenance of this. So what is the coverage? So there are several types in coverage. So the major ones, the most uh, major one is the statement coverage, and also functional coverage and branch coverage. 
and there's some more advanced coverage, but uh, often we hear these three major coverages. Let me explain one by one. So the functional coverage, this is very simple. So the functions which are defined in the program, so the percentage of the functions which are called upon. So these are the calls, and there are three uh, functions and who then bus were called upon. So who is covered and buzz is also covered, but bar was not covered. So in this case, out of the three functions, uh, two were executed. So the ratio is 67 percentage. So this is very easy to understand, and it is also easy to visualize. Those are the benefits, but still there is a weakness as an indicator. So if there are other functions in the lines, those would not be 100% uh, uh, covered by the functional coverage. So there is a weakness as an indicator. And next is a, a statement coverage. So this is to look at the number of statements which were executed in the test. So this is the functions. And the test is to uh, call minus 1. So x is 1. So comparing 1 to 0. And this is uh, executed. But this one is not described in the test. So among the lines which were executed and uh, how many lines were executed. So if there are comments or a keyword only, this will be ignored. And if there are four meaningful lines and three lines were executed, so in this case, uh, three out of four were covered. And this is also easy to understand. And it's also in the uh, unit of line, so it's easy to visualize. So when people talk about coverage, this is something that they will think of at, at first. So in Ruby, this is very typical. So uh, this can be written in one sentence. It's only one line. So if this is executed, and then it will be counted as executed. So I will have more concrete examples later on. So regardless of true or false, uh, if this line is executed, and then uh, this it's, it is regarded as executed. So that's the weakness. Last one is the branch coverage. So it's a little bit different from those uh, the previous two. So if there are true or false, if both were covered or not. So this is the code. And if there are if, and in test 0 and 1 are called upon, and x is 0 and 1. So for this one, 0 equals 0, so this is the executed. But for this ne next one, it's 1 and 0. So this is skipped. So for the first branch, sometimes it is uh, executed and sometimes not. So this one is OK. But for the second line, if x is 0 or x is 1, only true is executed. So in this second line, uh, it's not covered. So only uh, one out of two branches were executed. So this is the branch coverage. So this is a pretty comprehensive compared with the previous two. But it is rather hard to visualize. So if there are several branches in one line, or if the, uh, there's more complexity, it's difficult. So I talked about those three coverages. and. Functional coverage is easy to understand, and the branch coverage is exhaustive, but uh, there's some um, demerit, so there's kind of trade off. So, the kind of support by the uh, Ruby 
version of uh, older than 2.4. So for line coverage or statement coverage, it is embedded. But for functional coverage, uh, if the user makes uh, some efforts, it can be uh, done by users. And branch coverage is not supported at all, so it cannot be measured. So this is the current situation for the, uh, the Ruby. Uh, the implementation, but uh, for the next Ruby 2.5, all these three will be uh, supported as a standard. And for the development version, this has already been implemented. So this is about uh, what is the coverage and what is the current condition for Ruby. So the how, how to use coverage is not so easy or it's simple. So as I mentioned at the beginning, coverage is to measure the goodness of the test. So what is the good test? So there are two aspects. Is it exhaustive against the code? That's a one viewpoint. And also we have to look from the another viewpoint that is if it is uh, exhaustive from the specification point of view. So the first one, the if it's comprehensive against the code, can be measured. But uh, the next one is a bit tricky. So let me just uh, show you a simple example. So this is the function to do the calculation. So plus and two numbers. If it's plus, make additions. And if it's minus, uh, make subtraction. The top one is code and the bottom one is the test. So we measure the branch coverage. So in this sometimes it goes from here and to here. So for plus it is conducted, but for minus there's no test, it's not executed. So it was found that testing was not sufficient, so we added the test. So if it's minus then this should be done. And then branch coverage becomes 100%. So it, this is actually not true because when we look at the specification, uh, multiplication was also required. So this is the correct test. Multiplication also has to be conducted. So even though the coverage is 100%, uh, this was not uh, found out. So when we think about what was wrong, so when the testing insufficiency was found, uh, the mistake was to add another test. So if something is not covered, instead of writing or adding the test, but uh, you should think about what was the missing perspective in the testing? So here, these are covered, so they're okay. And if there are other symbols, what would have happened? So if you have noticed that, you would have uh, referred to the specification and uh, noticed. Well, it's not an absolute solution, but uh, coverage can be an effective tool uh, to give you uh, some perspective. So coverage should be used as kind of a prompt prompt to think about the testing. So what was if there's something missing, uh, you should take time and uh, think about what was missing. And in order to do that, I think there's many people who are on the managerial positions, but uh, sometimes uh, coverage is used as a target or management tool, but uh, I don't think this is the best way to use coverage because if someone says that the coverage has to be over 90%, otherwise uh, it would not be released, then uh, developers uh, would be uh, tempted to uh, identify the codes which are not executed and then just add some uh, tests to achieve the target coverage percentage. 
So, but uh, like in the previous case, they will lose the opportunity to think about uh, the uh, coverage or the um, if it, all the specification is covered or not. So, I'm not trying to <coughs> deny this kind of thinking, but uh, we should not uh, be settling uh, for the uh, the easy uh, test additions. So, I don't think this uh, kind of method should be highly recommended. So next, I want to talk about how to measure coverage in Ruby. So uh, mainly there are two ways. So I made this coverage s dot s o library. One way is to directly use this library. So if you do this, as soon as it becomes Ruby two point five, uh, this there's a support. So. But uh, this is a kind of primitive library, so there is no functionality to visualize. So I think it might be difficult to use this directly. But uh, later I will talk about the cookpad example, uh, which might be a good case to use this one uh, first option. But uh, another way is to use the uh, simple curve. This is a more convenient library. So today I would like to talk about this one. So this is the coverage.so wrapper, which are widely used, and it would move on Ruby 2.4 or even 2.2, and up to Ruby 2.4, only the statement coverage is supported. But uh, if 2.5 coverage so. I think uh, it has been said that uh, a functional coverage and the branch coverage will also be supported in the future. So this is the code, addition and subtraction, and this is the spec, 3 plus 4 is 7. So this is written in R spec. So all you have to do is to just add three lines to measure the coverage. So this is a spec helper. This should be uh, put uh, on the first first line. And for simple curve, the installation is required. So these two lines should be added. And in order to read this file, uh, we need this file dot rs spec file so all you have to do is just to create these two files so in many projects our spec file are also all already existing so just add these two lines so once you execute this so there's a restriction so this should be uh, put on on the first line of the code. So three lines and two files should be pre uh, prepared and then execute. And as a result, you can see the coverage report generated. So in the folder, the uh, measurement results are shown as a HTML file. There are two specs, and then respectively 75% and 100%. Naturally, this is a code, I mean, a line coverage. It's uh, green on this side, but uh, those three lines were executed, but uh, this was not uh, executed. That's the uh, code Ruby uh, identifies. prior uh, procedure alone can tell this uh, information and then uh, this is uh, this has to require a thinking trigger this is a uh, well, measurement uh, method now cookpad uh, services is the, the domain for application as Monash said 
cook service uh, 2.7 million cookpad uh, users and then in the whole world ma maybe a uh, half of uh, I mean 50 million uh, people a major uh, scale of uh, service uh, provision and uh, also this is uh, something which you know very well uh, the recipe for the for the largest uh, uh, rails uh, application monolith and the uh, number of um, uh, lines uh, 430,000 lines which is a big source code R uh, recently microservices uh, is uh, being in progress and then making things uh, smaller but uh, uh, this is a big one in this scale of application test is uh, also major attempt and uh, our ordinary PC was used uh, to see how it runs. Two and a half days uh, took it took. So it, 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 it's a long, long um, work. Parallel uh, testing is also done. And uh, this is an open source uh, triple add spec uh, can be used. And uh, triple R spec master is existing and uh, lots of lots of uh, slaves um, are also working under and then once uh, one test is uh, finished then uh, you move to another one and then keep going and then uh, as I said uh, uh, it took two and a half days uh, but now it's uh, 10 minutes or less so uh, this supports this uh, another one, but there is uh, there we do not assume that uh, complicated comp complex uh, parallel uh, uh, execution requirements are non-existing. Uh, so what we did is uh, simple triple R spec, and then as soon as execution is complete, then uh, coverage uh, tallying server. Uh, receives the information and uh, every time uh, individual spec um, uh, execution is complete then it moves to the next one so this is a C language uh, optimized lots of work I mean uh, I, I really worked hard for about one week to straighten this thing so and as Matsuda-san's uh, data showed coverage was measured entirely coverage value how much should be uh, good enough it's a difficult uh, question to answer depending on the concept on which implementation is done uh, sometimes uh, we say that uh, if it's above 84 percent it's reasonable now the controller, uh, uh, oftentimes, you I mean, uh, test it r rather well. But other areas needs uh, perhaps uh, improvement. Coverage measurement uh, was done uh, some time ago. Cookpad chain uh, had an impression uh, that. Uh, Lots of efforts are being, being uh, made. This is a recipe controller. Uh, it displays, shows. It, this area is red, which is a coach unlisted. Code. That means that this content was not executed. At the head of the method, a uh, special condition uh, is uh, being checked. But the recipe dot blank, if it's a blank, then uh, uh, the, uh, the condition is returned. So this is a simple code, but it is uh, unnecessary. So the 
front at the, the beginning um, of, the, of the method that this has to be done, not later. It is rather difficult to explain, but uh, this is the area where we are afraid that uh, things are missing, not executed uh, or covered. And uh, we have been able to discover how codes uh, not covered. Good part uh, source code. Uh, Mr. Matsuda Akira's uh, book I uh, read taught me that uh, uh, you can you, you can have uh, uh, discovery of unnecessary codes uh, after half day work. So uh, uh, I hope you can see that uh, work needs to be done takes time, but uh, coverage has to be understood, and then we have to have appropriate. Uh, uh, setting of, of uh, goals, and after 2.5, uh, we are going to give uh, better support, and uh, let's use uh, test coverage as a thinking trigger, and uh, concretely, um, we have to, uh, I, I try to explain to you uh, how this is done concretely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Endo-san. He punctually finished his uh, presentation. Now, let us open the floor for questions and answers. If you're interested in asking a question, please re kindly raise hand. Hearing none? Yes, there is one. Microphone will be brought to you. Our spec parallelization three. But how, how, how many uh, units were used? I, may, I, I don't know if, if I can tell you that. Uh, and, and also, I'm, I'm not sure if I really understand. Several dozens. Are there any other questions? Hearing none. Today, also, tomorrow, also, we have uh, presentations from Cookpad. It's almost like a Cookpad festival, <laughs> this conference uh, this year. But depending on the content, contents, uh, we have carefully selected our program uh, committee, made a careful selection uh, am from among those who made applications. Mr. Endo's uh, presentation has been very interesting and uh, given a good approval. Thank you.